There's a minimalism to black and white photography that can really elevate a story. It's also something that can be a bit of a safety blanket for many men that like to cosplay as photography experts on the internet. However wide that chasm may be between those two realities, there's at least one thing that binds them together, and that's intention. You gotta have courage to commit yourself to black and white. And I know, not the same kind of courage as you see in first responders or grown men ordering a frappuccino at Starbucks. A level of courage to intentionally limit how you create your photography. In this case, removing color from your arsenal. Last year, I got to spend several months with the Leica M11 monochrome. I got to take it around the world and shoot several projects with it. And so some of you may be wondering, Gadgen, have you found the courage to finally commit to black and white photography? Well, I can proudly tell you that the answer to that question is absolutely not. Something that I've always done for years with modern cameras, whenever I first get them, whether it's you know for my own work or testing for someone else, I'll set up a black and white profile. And the reason for this is that the RAW file, it already has all the color information baked in. So I switched to a monochrome JPEG profile to help me compose the shot. You see, when I'm about to take a picture of something, my eye has already caught what I found interesting, and it might include the color. When I'm looking behind the electronic viewfinder or the LCD, I am removing color from this element to just focus on the form of the image. By removing color, I'm putting more of a priority on shape, contrast, and atmosphere. This is all to say that most of my shooting is happening in a black and white world where color is being managed afterwards. But with the Leica M11 monochrome, you buy real estate in a black and white world. It's designed to be this premium tool to tell monochrome stories from beginning to end. Unlike color sensors, the sensor of this camera captures all incoming light at each pixel. Where a color sensor sees pixels designed to capture red, green, blue, a monochrome sensor just reacts to light itself. The result is a sensor that has improved light sensitivity. Not only is this a better tool for black and white photography, it's a more precise one as well. Armed with a higher ISO ceiling, better noise pattern, and some really unique glass, this is a camera that just keeps encouraging you to go out and shoot, and even in the most challenging lighting conditions. It's like that parent that you had that knew that you could do this one special skill, so they keep pushing you to go do that thing in front of other people, you know, do that special trick of yours. For some, it might be singing, for some, it might be dancing. For me, apparently, it was doing stand-up, dressed up as Pee Wee Herman. Childhood issues aside, I found that this camera really changed when and how you can tell your stories. With a camera like this, you can be a bit more daring, a bit more liberal, and shoot it in more situations and create really unique images. The thing to consider though is that while the dynamic range is impressive and even better than the original M11, you still have to protect those highlights. Because it's capturing all light information, it's not just one red, green, or blue channel that's losing information. You're losing all light if you lose it. So I would underexpose. I would protect those highlights. I would make sure that I'm exposing for those highlights and protecting the shadows and bringing them in later, which you can do very easily. That being said, the previews that I would see in the field, they weren't a great representation of what the final image was going to look like. And it finally occurred to me, I had to treat the Leica M11 monochrome more like a film camera. This tool, it requires skill, patience, and a clear understanding of light. When you stay in the moment and you avoid chimping over the screen and you wait to review your images when you're sitting in an editor's chair, that's where this experience really shines through. I would land these shots that had an incredible amount of detail and dynamic range to them. And in many instances, the black and white added to the story. It felt like something that, that made the image more timeless. While the absence of color might break the minds of some photographers, I started to realize how this could be empowering for others. It's a precision tool with incredible imaging technology that looks great top to bottom. The M11 monochrome has that classic Leica rangefinder design, but it's even more reserved, and it makes for something that feels incredibly discreet. With a handful of buttons and an easy to access battery, it's almost identical to the original Leica M11, 
except for that dark trim around the viewfinder, monochrome label, and no red dot. With a new sapphire glass display and 256 gigabytes of internal storage, you get a couple of upgrades that make a noticeable difference in the field. Whether it was for backup, overflow, or just in case you forget a card, the value of internal storage on a modern camera cannot be understated. As much as people wanna fight for dual card slots, I think this is not the right solution. I think people are really looking for redundancy and fast storage. Being able to have a camera with a ton of internal storage and one card slot, well, it just means that you have less cards to juggle around and a pretty good safety net in a pinch. There's also the simplicity of using a camera like this where the menus and the iPhone app just, well, they're just easy to use. It feels like it was made for humans. I keep saying this and I, I hope more companies start to move in this direction, but it shouldn't feel like an escape room when you dive into the menus of a camera. The goal of these menus, I think it should be to get exactly what you need as fast as possible. And it's cameras like this that do it really well. Going back to the image quality, you have this M11 sensor that can capture at 60, 36, or 18 megapixels, but still keep the full readout of the sensor. So you can change the size of your file depending on what you're capturing. This monochrome version has this ability to capture even slightly more detail and clarity and micro contrast. And you know, you're really gonna have to ask yourself whether you want that much detail in your photography. There were some instances where you might wanna introduce a diffusion filter or even just grain to cut back on that detail. Again, it depends on the story you wanna tell, but with a camera like this, it gives you a lot. So you're really gonna have to be considerate in terms of how you're shooting with it. Since every single pixel is reacting to light on this sensor and it's not being split between RGB channels, you have something that captures about a stop or a little over a stop more dynamic range. And now this might sound like a lot, but the reality is it's only in select high contrast environments that you're really gonna appreciate this difference. But what I did appreciate is that when I had to recover highlights or recover shadows, the results felt cleaner. Because there wasn't this uneven distribution of clipping between three color channels, I felt like I can get a better result when I was editing these black and white files. The ISO tops out at 200,000 and I found that you could set the ceiling to 25,000 and not worry about dealing with too much noise. Going above that will give mixed results, but I wouldn't say that they're terrible. Keep in mind, if you wanna get the most out of a camera like this, find a way to keep the ISO below 6400 and use other elements of the exposure triangle to land the shot. More than anything, what I appreciated about the Leica M11 monochrome is that ISO became more of an aesthetic choice. You can use ISO to add this grain, especially when you pair it with a Sumalux lens and the uneven fall off. You can create something that, well, it has a different feeling to it, a, a different story to it. And I think that's really special with a camera like this. It's something that requires time and patience to, to really fine tune, but I felt like it was more doable on a camera like this than something with a color sensor. There's so much that this camera can do, you know, USB-C charging, tethering, highlight weighted metering, flash sync up to one over 180 and much, much more. If you wanna learn more about the M11 system, you can go back, check out my other reviews and, and journeys with this camera to get a real understanding of how versatile this solution can be. So how can a camera like this get better? One of the ways is I'd love to see a little bit more control in the JPEG profiles, a little bit more fine tuning. Because this is a camera that will often rely on a lot of underexposing, if there was a way to integrate uh, a reverse S curve with a bit more control where you can see a better preview in the moment, I think this would make for a better shooting experience for some photographers. I also understand why there's no film styles in this camera because it is just black and white, but it'd be cool to see at least one monochromatic film style that has grain emulation to create more of an analog look in the moment. I think that would be awesome. Turning this camera on, uh, at times it felt like it took longer than my original M11. Maybe it's just me. 
but it still feels like it might be a little bit too long for some people. Now, if you're asking me, I just turn the camera on, leave it on. If it goes to sleep, I'm just occasionally half pressing the shutter to, well, open it up and ready to shoot. But I'd love to see if in the future, these cameras can go from powered off to powered on just a smidge faster. I also mentioned this in my previous video with the M11. I'd love to see some JPEG profiles that introduce new frame lines that you can shoot, you know, in a different way, even if it is just for JPEG. Imagine having these high contrast black and white shots shot in a 16 by nine or even a wider aspect ratio. I think that would be really cool. One last thing I'll mention is the strap that comes with these cameras. I have yet to meet a pro photographer that shoots Leica that uses the strap that comes in the box. For me, I just find that it catches on to fabrics a little too often and I find something else to use for my journey. So I'd love to see a future where Leica updates all the straps that come along with their cameras. When I think of a camera like this, I think of people like Devin Yalkin, Andre Wagner, Muriel Florence, Devaraj Devin, and even Greg Williams. People that have this humanist approach and live in black and white photography. Again, I don't think it's enough to just love black and white photography. I think there, there's something intrinsic in people that makes them gravitate to a product like this. And that might be limiting, but the nice thing is for people that live in that space, they have a product to look to that speaks to them. And sure, you know, there's gonna be other people that have the discretionary funds to, to get something like this. And, and look at the thing, it's sexy, it's beautiful. You, you pick it up and put it down and well, you pick it back up again. You can't help yourself. It's like your phone, you know, when you're scrolling your phone and you put it back down and all of a sudden you find the phone in your hand all over again, that's kind of the feeling you have with a camera like this. It's compelling and in some cases it's arresting. But once more, that doesn't necessarily mean that this might be the best solution for you. I want to believe that the M11 monochrome would find a home in my lineup, that one of my two M solutions would be this one, especially with the amount of personal work that's being done in black and white. But I quickly realized that I could scratch this itch with something else, and that's film. I could just take my existing M6, throw in some black and white film, and voila, I have my own monochrome camera. What's special about this though, I could swap it out for color whenever I needed it to. The Leica M11 monochrome is an expensive proposition, not just in price, but in courage. You have to be willing to commit, and there's no guarantee that flipping to black and white is all of a sudden gonna make your images just more artistic. For hobbyists, it's not out of the realm of possibility. I wanna be clear here. I'm not saying that this camera is just for pros. All I'm asking is, do you want it bad enough? Is your storytelling really driving you in this direction? Where some may see limits, others may see freedom. There were these moments where the Leica M11 monochrome was really freeing and liberating in my shooting experience. The removal of color just made for something that removed some distractions and especially in very low light situations, it created results that on other solutions may have been unusable. For those of you that pull the trigger, you're gonna be met with this incredible shooting experience that gives to you as much as you give to it. And in some instances, even more. And there you have it, that is the review of my Leica M11 monochrome and my thanks to Leica for letting me borrow this thing and use it all over the place. Again, there was this time where I thought a black and white camera was a shoe in for someone like me, but I'm just having a bit more fun moving between color and black and white and picking the, the best one for the story that I'm trying to tell. But I'm still impressed, it's still an impressive tool. For those of you that are still watching, thank you for continuing to watch all the way through this video. More importantly, please let me know where you're watching from. So drop an emoji with the flag in your comment and let me know where you're watching from. And if you haven't already, I will encourage you. I don't know what you're waiting for because I've been saying this for a year. Join my photo club at Church and Street. It's free to join. And every other week I share a photography story. And a lot of times the videos that you see here are published first over over there and you can see all the photos there as well and again if you love photography I think you're gonna love being a part of that club as always my name is Gadgen thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time